In this tutorial video, we're going to see how to use the JFrame object in Java. Now, if you recall in the previous video, we spoke about the theory uh, behind the JFrame object and how to instantiate it or create it, in theory in any case. So in this video, we're going to do that uh, in a practical example. So in this first step, we're going to see how to instantiate or create uh, a JFrame object from the JFrame class. So in order to do that, uh, remember that you first of all have to import the um, swing package. So java.swing. And I'm going to be a bit more precise in the actual pack in the actual um, package that I want to import. So in this case, JFrame. So obviously I could have just imported just the Java swing package as a whole, but uh, I've just decided to do to be more precise in the actual package that I want. Okay, so now that's done, now we can instantiate <coughs> um, a JFrame object. So I'm going to create a, an object, JFrame type, that I'm going to call window equals new using the JFrame constructor from the class we imported. Okay, now if I were to run this program just like this, as you can see, the program is uh, has executed, but our frame isn't displaying. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I said why that's the case. It's because we have to, um, or by default, the frame is invisible. So we have to um, <coughs> type an instruction, which is the following window, so the name of our object, window dot um, set visible true okay <clears throat> by default um, you can imagine that this instruction is written out but um, as a parameter it has false so that's why our uh, frame doesn't appear now if we run our program again as you can see <coughs> our J frame uh, object appears here. Um, but as you can see, it's minuscule, it's very small, and that's because we haven't parameterized it yet. So that's what we'll be seeing in the next step. So now that we've got our frame, let's parameterize it. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of the methods and parameters you can use with the J frame object. As you well know, all you have to do is go to the um, official. Uh, Oracle website and look at the class JFrame and you'll have a list of all the methods and parameters you can use with a um, JFrame object from that class. So <clears throat> in this step I'm just going to show you um, a few. Uh, so let's start off by closing the program here. So for example we want to add uh, let's say a title to our frame. So window which is the name of our object and then set title my first window with java for example okay that's going to give our frame a title uh, we can determine the size of our frame so window dot uh, set size and let's say uh, 600 by um, 500 and these are of course um, pixels and then um, <coughs> another instruction would be, um, yeah, we can set the frame in the middle of our screen. So uh, again, window dot set location relative to, and then as a parameter null. Okay. And then before I show you the last instruction, I'm just going to run the program just to show you that these work to start off with. So as you can see our uh, frame is in the middle of our screen um, it has the title and we've set the size um, now if you notice if I were to close uh, our frame just hit not the program just the frame so close see that our program is still running so what I want to do is uh, type an instruction that when I close the actual frame the um, program will stop as well so let's terminate the program manually ourselves here and then let's type the following window dot set default uh, close operation and jframe dot exit 
underscore on underscore close like so <clears throat> so now when I run the program okay and then when I close the J frame myself or the frame myself see that the program um, stops automatically so this is just an example of some of the instructions you can use with a JFrame object. Uh, again, uh, if you want to know, if you want to see all of them, as I said, go to the Oracle uh, website or documentation. So in this step, we're going to see how to organize and structurize our code. Um, because in the pre previous steps, uh, you'd notice that we created um, our JFrame object and we parameterized it inside the main method of the main program. So if we were working in a complicated program, let's say, uh, we would obviously have separate classes um, in order to create a JFrame object, for example. So this is what we've done here. We've created a um, class named window. Um, inside this class, we're importing obviously the uh, javax.swing.jframe package and this class is an extension of the JFrame uh, class which we imported here. Now inside this class we've, um, <coughs> we have a constructor uh, and inside that constructor we are basically uh, we have the same instructions we had previously to create a um, JFrame object. So uh, except the only difference is we're using the term this because we work inside the class. So it's the exact same instructions we saw previously. Um, so because we have a separate class, <coughs> if we go to our main method now, obviously it's not the same instruction. We're uh, instantiating an object type window, uh, named win in this case, using the window constructor from the class we created here. So if we launch our program now, our frame appears like it did previously except that in this case we've um, <coughs> organized and uh, structured our code uh, properly. So that's how you use um, the G-Frame object in Java.